Today I want to talk about some of the things that I do in preparation for coloring a new project. What I look for in scripts, the notes that I make, and how I plan out an issue before I ever start coloring anything. I'll be relating this to comics because that's what I do, is color comics, but many of these tips can be applied to other types of art as well, of course. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Let's get started. Now, if you've ever done tech support, you know it's always best to start with the simplest, most basic thing first. You know, make sure it's plugged in, that sort of thing. So the first thing I do is check the files themselves. Make sure that the specs on the pages are correct. If you get pages that are too low in resolution because they've accidentally sent you the JPEGs or something, you're going to have a bad time trying to color that. And it's almost impossible to correct later. Most of the pages I get are anywhere from three to 6,000 pixels wide and five to 10,000 pixels tall. And they're at least 300 DPI. I do get some pages at 400 and up to 600 these days. If ever in doubt, it never hurts to ask before making any changes yourself. I would always double check with the publisher or your collaborators first. It's pretty easy to find all the tech specs with a quick search, but if you're curious, I will link some of those resources in the description. The next thing might seem like a no-brainer, but read your scripts. I like to put all of my scripts into Google Drive. That way they're all in one place. It also allows me to make notes out to the side on all the things that I'm going to be talking about on the rest of this list. So what should you be looking for as you read a script? There are a few things I usually keep mental notes on and sometimes actual notes on. And we're gonna start with locations. I like to get a rough count of how many different locations and scenes there are. In comics, we don't have the luxury of musical shifts or transitions in the way that a TV show might to indicate you're moving to a new location or a new scene. So I try to make sure each location has its own feel. That might mean huge swings in colors from one place to another, or just subtle shifts in the lighting. There's no right or wrong way as long as they feel different. And the reason you should think about this ahead of time is, let's say you have a scene at the beginning of your book and you wanna use a, a very red color scheme for that particular scene. Well, what happens when you get to the fifth scene in the book and the script calls for a big red scene? <laughs> so it might be confusing to the reader if you have two locations with the same color scheme. And by the way, as a side note, in my experience, it's pretty rare to have that sort of thing dictated in the script. It's usually up to the colorist to make those decisions. So don't put yourself in a corner by not knowing what's coming later in the project. The next thing is the overall tone of each scene as the script progresses. You know, how should each scene feel? Is it an intense action scene or a quiet office conversation? Generally speaking, action scenes typically have higher contrast with greater differences in the hues, saturation levels, and the values. And in order to be sure that these scenes do feel different from the rest means that your quieter scenes are going to have less contrast. By the way, every time I say contrast, if you immediately think in terms of lights and darks, go watch my video I linked in the description for a more in-depth discussion of what contrast really is and how applying color theory might be simpler than you think. Is your scene meant to move fast or slow? To play around with the tempo on a page, I'll do things like in this panel here, I stripped away all of the rendering and really cranked the contrast to create the equivalent of like a jump scare or those jarring musical notes you might see in a movie to indicate to the reader that this moment is breaking up the flow of the scene. That sudden simplification of colors creates a contrast between that panel and the rest of the page. Time of day is by far the most common question that I have to ask when going through a script. Most writers do a great job of making that clear, but if not, ask. You don't want to assume unless it's very obvious on the page. For example, if the moon is in the sky, it's nighttime. Or if there's a clock in the scene, which doesn't happen very much, never be afraid to ask for clarification. You don't want to create a continuity problem because you've got the wrong time of day. And if you did get it wrong, trying to color correct day to night rarely works because the lighting should be handled differently depending on what time it is. If you want to see a video breaking down some of my favorite techniques for night versus day or sunset versus sunrise, subscribe and maybe press some of those silly buttons around this video. That video is coming soon. If you want to keep this channel alive, please consider one of my coloring courses, Patreon maybe if you want some of my PSD files, access to my Discord and a live class with me every month. There's even a tip jar down there now. So thank you so much for watching. Give me a like if you learned something. See you in the next one. Take care.